Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season six, episode three of The Expanse. This episode is called Force Projection. Woo! Here we go. We're into the meat and potatoes now, guys. We've eaten all the veg. We're down to the meat and potatoes. Um, going into episode three. Um, I've not got a massive amount to say since the since the last episode. Um, just to sort of get ourselves in the zone, we've now taken out the Azure Dragon, so we're going to expect now a pretty quick um, and forceful response um, from at least Earth, but I'm assuming combined Earth and, and Martian fleet forces. Um, I'm already excited about getting a glimpse back on Laconia. I really want to see what's going on there. And as I say, I'm not quite clear on the timeline. I'm going to assume, given that they're settlers um, and given that they referenced Earth in the last episode, that they are contemporary um, and not the builders. But I could be I could be completely fucking wrong there. Um, I'm really I can't tell you how much I'm loving the scenes on Laconia, it's like a little bit why I feel robbed for like a 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th season because that planet, I could, I could literally have episodes on that planet getting to know the settlers, what's the politics, you know, what are the issues that they're facing, I really want to want to know about all that, um, but <clears throat> you guys were telling me in the comments that apparently Ty has made, there's been some sort of reference that this is, they're done with this is a TV show, which to me says, are we now moving into movies because that's just a better way to tell the story because of the time jumps and everything else. Because I'm telling you, if there's an Expanse movie in the pipeline at some point, I'm psyched for that. Obviously, I would prefer the whole thing was told as a TV programme, but I don't know shit about writing a screenplay or, you know, turning a piece of, of written fiction into you know, um, an audio-visual display. So I'm just, I want this to continue in some form. I can't be more emphatic about that. I, I'm I'm hesitant to say it yet because we haven't completed. But at this point for me, it's my favourite sci-fi show ever. Um, I've had my sci-fi beating the shit out of it this year because I'd never watched Battlestar Galactica and obviously I came to The Expanse relatively late as well. Both those shows are now my favourite science fiction shows of all time. And I've been watching sci-fi since literally I could watch television like on my dad's lap. So, yeah, I, I feel like strangely privileged to be old enough and grown enough, I think, to really fully appreciate um, what Battlestar Galactica and The Expanse um Bought, have bought to sci-fi it's just incredible and and having watched them alongside each other for the past kind of year 18 months i gotta say um i feel like the expanse has really kind of taken the baton from battlestar galactica it's not the same um you know they are definitely distinct things and, and i think and that's why i say carry the baton because this what the things that are similar about The Expanse aren't like this shot or that shot or, you know, this thing or that thing. It's it's the way that they're redefining the genre and re-kind of energising this genre. You know, what I was saying last week about the way that they've created scenes in space, space battles... You know, it, it, conversations between intimate partners, polyamorous crews, you know, that are families on ships that have a polyamorous relationship. It's like there is so much here. It, it, it's, oh, I can. It's just, it, I can with the praise for this show. So I'm really excited. The first two episodes, in my view, have been brilliant um, because I'm behind everyone else watching i have no idea what the public reception of this season is i don't know what the scuttlebutt is on this on this series because i've just muted all of my social media accounts everything is like <laughs> the expanse is blacklisted um because i just cannot risk a spoiler at this stage so i don't know but so i might be completely 
off kilter um, with my view, but certainly it's just gorgeous. It looks beautiful. It's an incredible story. I, I'm riveted. It doesn't feel like it's going to end in four episodes. I've got no sense of winding down about this show at all, which is weird. Um, but yeah, I love it. So I can't wait to see Earth's response. Um, I would... I can't imagine where Philip is going next. That's probably the biggest, like, I don't... You know, it's really nice the Rossi crew seem to be coming together, you know. Naomi has a lot to deal with, with forgiving Clarissa, because, you know, this woman would have killed her. Like, if it wouldn't have been for Anna, you know, Clarissa would have killed Naomi in that moment. So she has looked into that woman's face and seen and seen a monster that was about, you know, was damn well near killed her. Um, but we're kind of seeing some movement there now. And I actually think that they will have a lot more in common once they start talking. And I don't mean in terms of their life, you know, one's a, you know, socialite heiress, you know, and, and the other grew up piss poor in the belt. But I think there are, there are some, they're actually quite similar as characters. I think Peaches and Naomi in the sense of like their loyalty, um, their willingness to fight for the things that they believe in. They're both actually extremely brave. Um, and also they're in a kind of similar position in the sense that Clarissa had to turn against the people she most loved in the world, right? For, because it was the right thing to do ultimately. Like she had to let go of her father. And I feel like Naomi has to let go of, I don't even know how to put this. Sometimes just because people are your people, it doesn't mean that you should be fighting alongside them. And it doesn't mean they're the people that you have common um, calls with. And that's the position Naomi's in at the moment, which I think is having her feel incredibly lonely. And Peaches knows what that's like. So I don't know if she can contribute maybe some way there. And I can't get enough of Jim and Peaches and Amos and Peaches. I mean, it's the whole thing. And I, you know, I didn't talk about it at the end of the last episode, but <sighs> Bobby shredding Amos is like my new favorite thing in the world. I come remember right back when Bobby first entered the Rosie and her and Amos squared up. Like there was this amazing like chemistry between the two of them as like bros. And it's great to kind of see that continue like they've they've actually as one of another thing the expanse does really well is creating character relationships like if a character meets someone and then they don't see them for two seasons when they meet up again there is expert continuity with how that relationship feels and is as managed and executed and that is not true for a lot of shows i mean that a lot of shows honestly don't give a shit about continuity it drives me mad because it's like it ends up feeling like as an audience member you care more about the characters than the writers do because they're not they're not having that same attention to be able to go wait in season two episode four you know they did this and i feel like that's kind of a, a, that is you could never make that argument against the expanse because they track these relationships so well and like a lot of the core drama of the show is rooted in that consistency and in that evolution of character relationships is amazing so as always when i say i'm not going to talk for very long i end up going on a right one so i hope you got something from that introduction anyway um i want to just for my own sanity want to record down my thoughts about where i was with regards to the season at, at this point obviously having had the disaster of game of frames <laughs> I'm still sore about it. I'm still sore about it. I would never be over the murder of one of my favourite shows of all time. But let it go. But I'm just present in it because I'm going to be honest.
you know, I would be devastated. But I cannot imagine for a moment that Ty and, and you know, the whole team at The Expanse, I just don't think they'd do that to us. Um, so fingers crossed. But yeah, without further ado, let's have at it. That looked like pretty more cool stuff. Laconia! Yay! It was like almost a ring. It was like a half built ring. That must be that shippy thing in the sky. Different places Honey. For different reasons. Can I go with you? No! I told you, stop following me. Come on, let's go. Oh, he's got a little friend. Oh, my sweet summer child. Oh, shit. I think the strange dog would have eaten all those birds by now. Or at least you can get the drone and take it home. It's fixed. What? <laughs> Who did that? Not... The dog didn't do it. Did the fucking dog do it? Carry on! Well, this is gonna hurt like a mother. Shit. What happened? Take him to the dog! Take him to the dog, though. I'm not kidding. This is battle music! Attention, all inhabitants of Ceres State. Ooh! This is the joint fleet of the United Nations of Earth and Buddha and the Mars Congressional Republic. We demand the immediate and unconditional surrender of all free Navy forces. Oh shit! No response from Ceres Station on any band. What's happening? Is there lying? Series. Hard to believe. This feels like a trap. Yeah, it is a trap. Oh, it's her! The captain of the, um... Uh, have a bump the mamarambi the hammurabi? Ah, uh, yes! What's the trick? He's. There, there's gonna be a counter attack. They'll probably blow the fucking thing up knowing Marco. He's like, they're sentimental. What did she just say? Honey, what did she just say? What the fuck is this? Is that electric cables coming down? They can electric it everyone. What have they done? Have they stripped it? They couldn't have stripped all of series and fucked off. They stripped it! Oh you fuckers! That's Marco's henchwoman there. He didn't tell me where he was going or why, and I didn't ask. He knows the strategic value of this port. He would not have let us take control of the seat of his government. You will encounter no resistance on this station. If I were part of an insurgency, would I have just given myself up as I did? That would be a clever ploy. Maybe you're kind of clever. If you want my advice, here it is. Take your people and leave. Watch your fucking mouth. Sergeant? Inorus abandoned you. I chose to remain here. To limit the damage your illegitimate occupation will do. Everything that could be of use to your troops has been stripped. Sirius has no warships, no munitions, no functioning repair skiffs, no surplus fuel or rations. And at a current rate of consumption, only enough food and air for approximately three weeks. Motherfucker. What is this shit? But Sanjarani is not to be removed from this station for any interviews. No coercive methods. We don't use coercion, ma'am. We don't need to. 
<laughs> Focus drugs. There's no way we can feed and supply a million people on three weeks' notice. Son of a bitch. Overstretched. That's the whole fucking point, isn't it? Yeah. In order it's to starve them. At this point and you turn it into a trap. Mm. And we're in it now. If we don't help this station, mm. we will be the ones responsible for a massive humanitarian crisis. The belt will see us once again mm. as the oppressor. And in our power will continue to grow. Oh, here we go. Hey, sexy lady. Oh, okay. Looks like clear sail. Wait, all the way to pause. Wait, wait. Kamina's got all the um, addresses for Marco's supply depots. What if they can tag team with the Rosi and? actually resupply series from Marco's fucking stash. Ooh. Play. You have the watch. Wait, what? No. I really need to get some sleep. I'm starting to drift off in the chair. So as of now, you're in the rotation. Oh my God. You know, I wasn't in the Navy. I can hold my own in a shuttle, but I'm not ready to fly a ship like this. It's just point A to point B from here. <clears throat> Rossi does that fine on her own. In that case. <laughs> oh shit! Are you alright? Mm, yeah, I'm fine. It's been a while since I used my mods. It's taking longer to flush out of my system than it used to. I'm fine, really. Okay. Hopefully, you won't have to use those mods again anytime soon. I got them because of you. Wow. I'm not blaming you. I did it to myself. I take responsibility for that. I used my mods to kill a man with my bare hands. His name was Ren. Mm -hmm. He trained me, stood up for me, and was nothing but good to me. Every time I use my mods, I see his face. I think that's the real reason I always throw up afterwards. Everybody on this ship has something they regret. Including Amos, I think. We're in good company. I have to watch. Oh. God. Do you believe that prick an hour is just cut and run? He's got a plan. They got some good noodle shops on series. You spend time there? Oh, yeah. When I was on the camp, the run was pretty much Saturn and Sirius mm. in the back. The Canterbury, I haven't thought about that in a while. <laughs> that was a long time ago. When the Donny got killed, most Martians blamed you and yours for it. Yep. It was a time I would have jumped at the chance to haul you all back to Hecate Base and have you vigorously deep. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone quietly. <gasps> that would have been fun, too. Ooh! <laughs> oh, it's so hot. Oh, I've never seen it so hot. It what else is good on series? They got decent booze, and all the brothels are union. <laughs> Anything other than noodles, bars, and brothels. <laughs> I never look. <laughs> I love it. How can you construe that as anything other than a way? How much of our own food will be redirected to start feeding these terrorists? They're not. When our own citizens are in dire need. It's okay to talk about it. I didn't want to push. Mm. It came time to go out the door and for a few seconds I was back on the pillow mm. jumping off the Chetsamoka without an air bottle. My body just wouldn't move. It's fucking humiliating. I've been through all the things you did. Would you be embarrassed for me? No. There you go. You'd be doing that for yourself. True. Mm. Can I ask you a favor? Of course. What? 
I came across some UNN surveillance video of the Barkeys leaving the ring space, and I asked Bobby if the UN had any record of similar incidents of ships that went missing after ring transits, and she came through, but there's a ton of data, and I could really use some help making sense of it. I'm not trying to distract you giving me an interesting problem. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I love it. They're so wholesome. Right. Okay. What's the fucking plan? Some rest on several stations in the belt. As some expressed anger over what they believe was abandonment of series station. On Ganymede, an agrogenetic researcher was shot and killed, but she attempted to flee during a routine security check. It is believed the researcher was a spy for the inners. On Vesta. Inaros Parsons clashed with protesters, leaving several injured, including one three Navy mechanic dead. Whoa. Whoa. Three new UNN capital ships and two Martian Donizer class. That's more than we expected. Damn, they will rebuild their forces quickly. They will need them. This is nothing to be happy about. Mm. <laughs> Why should I be sad? We will overcome it. This is not the inner's kind of fight. We will hit and run and hit and run and be gone before they know what hit them. What's on your mind? They're calling us cowards. Who exactly are they? Dissidents on the news. Why do you care what a dissident thing? Well, because you were dissident once. You told the people on cities that it was our new capital, that we would make it the pride of the belt. And you feel that? We abandoned them. Or was that always part of your plan? We could never hold Ceres against the inners. But the people there needed to believe that we could. So I told the people what they needed to hear, when they needed to hear it. We stripped the station, left them barely enough to we survive. We left the inners with a problem that they had to deal with. It speaks well of you that you care about them. But the Belters on series are not like us. Oh, of course not. No. Generation after generation, they've slaved away for the Fuck off. their needs instead of fighting for ours. God. This guy is... In the fight. You're such a... That's who we are. Who we were born to be. Never forget what your name is. The name we share. <laughs> it's a fucking prick. Oh, Marco. And you trust them fully? Fully. Well, more like enough. <laughs> Oh my god. Sana. Poor, poor Ata. Doesn't know where she'll get her food and water. Welcome to the belt. Yeah. So Monica went to Pastorana. The supply depot should be around here. Definitely in this orbit. Definitely? More or less. Could be as many as ten from what I heard. For what purpose? Why go to such trouble to hide supplies like this? Maybe hedging is bet for when the inners will come. Which now they have. You tell me. No one should have to live the way we have. And maybe now they'll understand it. Understand what? That the belt poisoned the water and stopped them? That we killed the children the way that they kill us? What is the problem? Sorry, Captain. We did not mean to disturb you. The thing is, they're both right. Captain Trauma, we won Golden Bow. Now we fight with you. <gasps> yeah! I'm ready for a fight. Me too. Me bloody too. By the way, I quite liked your last report. Mm. I figured that you approved it. <laughs> I like for eliciting sympathy. Mm -hmm. okay, well, my next piece will be better. I can't believe we got Anna. I cannot believe we got a shot of Anna. That was nice. Thank you. Tell your Marines to keep a close eye on her. She has a knack for causing trouble. <laughs> She's gonna get up to some shit. 
Oh, my sweet summer child. This is it. Cup 10. Scopes pick up one jive plume. No! Rosie not day. They're headed for cities. No! To rejoin their inners, no doubt. They're alone. Fuck! They have a real gun. Yeah, and by the time they're close enough to use it, they will be dust. No, they fucking won't. With Lauba and Granicus, our missile advantage is five to one. You don't have to do this. Don't. Right time. You should learn to recognize an opportunity when one presents itself. Oh, I hope this blows a fucking face. It's your Please. mother! Will you take the guns? And shoot his own mum? You yes, psychopath! You fucking... You... What is oh. your life, son? This better blow up in his face. No! Oh, shit, we're not even ready! Crack, so it won't get any worse. Oh, God. But I can't oh, say how sick. well I bonded. This alloy is tough as shit. That was a song I'm made out of, anyway. It's made of Mars, honey buns. <laughs> Someone sent me something. Could you be more vague? Who? It looks like it was all routed through anonymous relays. Somebody's trying hard not to leave any tracks. Hmm. Amos. <gasps> I hope this finds you well. No! That's, That's the plant guy. Pratt! Yeah. Free Navy shot a researcher in my lab today. They said she was a spy. Her name was Carbonidus. For the past year, we've been working on ways to improve crop yields for food grown in the belt. Carbonidus was developing a new strain of yeast with a robust proofing polymerase, modified with organelles that mimic the protomolecules harvesting structures. It produces a complete. Give him a second. I mean, it's <laughs> on to it. Um, Create massive amounts of food out of little more than spare carbon dioxide and waste energy. You know people with power. Please, give this data to them. Earth could use it now. Don't worry about me, or May, or the rest of us. I can take care of them. I miss you, my friend. Miss you too, Brett! There's nothing in this for him. He's just a good guy. <laughs> That's what it always takes. If Prax thinks it's important, then it is. Turn it to a Vassarella. Chrissy will know what to do with it. Yeah. The old lady really loves it when you call her that. At least I say it to her face. <laughs> I'm literally, like, trying to forget that they're about to get blown to bits. Jim. Jim. I'm awake. <laughs> I think there's a pattern with these ship disappearances. But the disappearances seem to be happening in clusters, each mm -hmm. roughly spanning the same amount of time. There's like a hole suddenly opens in the floor. And if someone wow. falls in, they're gone. But then a minute later, the hole itself is gone and everything seems normal. Until another hole suddenly opens up somewhere else. And for the next minute, more people fall into that. Hold it. What is it? Radar ping three ships vectoring towards us at high speed. IDs? Fuck! No transponders. Checking drive signatures. It's Marco. It's fucking Marco! Hey, Cap. Everybody suit up and strap in. It's about to get hot. Shit. So if they win, her son dies. <sighs> It'll kill her. Let's go hit the wing. With my good dog Miloda. Didn't we come here to shoot these people? You dick. Don't worry, we can edit that out. Sorry, ma'am. Asshole. Thank you. Erte untemarish, harsh for give hip for the belt. Please, may not do nothing, ma'am. Ingo. Ingo. Kira on Toyota, okay? Hey. Where's your embe? God damn it. I'll be right back. What the shit?
make him shoot his own mum? You fucking prick! gonna be down for long our windows closing if that doesn't work you fire oh, you son of a bitch game twice the man you'll ever be son power down and send us your control codes i'll see you're treated fairly this is your only chance oh you prick Soon as possible. One who won't shit himself in battle. There's an experienced hand on the Shinkasato. You failed. You failed. Yeah. What did you say? I said you failed, you prick. But this is your fault. We didn't need to be here. We didn't need to be in this fight. We didn't need to kill James Holden. That was your pride. That was you. Just you wanted to kill the man. You are relieved of duty! Get off. This dick and out of my sight. Dude. 
dude. Dude! <laughs> Who's sorry now? You got to be sorry now. Ha uh ha. -huh. You are literally only alive due to the good grace of James Holden. I think that would piss him off more than dying. Bossman, Medina Station is pleased to report that RSR G6 was just received at Laconia Ring Gate. Operational testing will commence as soon as possible and we will, of course, keep you fully apprised. If this oh, wonderful shit. It will be fun. He's gonna come back with that fucking thing. Oh, what a prick. Okay, this is the next thing. Um, win or lose, play. The doctrine of one ship encompasses both tension and resolution. With no favor to either. Conflict and acceptance, unified into something greater. Oh my god, are we getting more Bobby and Amos? We are! Spoiled! <clears throat> Fuck! Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Are you lot ever think about getting crewed up properly? Properly? I mean, in what? <laughs> this ship's built for a dozen Marines and a flight crew. You've been out here on your own a long time. You could use some professional help. You saying we're amateurs? Well, don't get your knickers in a bun. <laughs> Why is it that every Martian I ever met thinks they're the hardest motherfucker in the whole goddamn solar system? <laughs> Probably because we were all training for war while you were still shitting your diapers. <laughs> you bragging about being good at pretend war? <laughs> I got this in a live fire exercise my first year in. But I'm sure queuing up for free food with all of that free open air back home was just as hard. <laughs> Clearly, you've never been to Baltimore. <laughs> Is that supposed to mean something to me? No. But for guys who practice war so much, you sure do seem to keep losing the real ones. <laughs> yeah, we're the ones getting our asses kicked. Remember when Earth still had a blue sky? Remember when Mars still had two moons? Do you remember when those Martian Marines saved your asses on the Donny? How'd that feel? Probably pretty similar to when Peaches saved your ass on the Azor Dragon. And she doesn't <laughs> even practice. Well, I hope you trained her up good, because there's about to be one less mechanic on board. Ooh! Should I wait while you go get your fancy suit on? <laughs> I saved my armor for actual threats. Hold on, be pissed if I hurt you. <laughs> I was just about to say the same thing to you. But with the interest of crew morale in mind, no one needs to get hurt. Just a simple game. First one to hit the deck loses. And what happens when I win? The loser cleans up the rest of this mess by themselves. Sure you want to do this? I'm very sure. Because I don't play fight. Oh, come on. <laughs> Big boy, play with me. Just a bit of fun, just blowing off some steam. Okay. All right. Let's go over the rules first, just so we're both clear. All right, well, first rule is, is no... <laughs> there, there, little man. You're gonna be all right. <laughs> oh shit! It's alright. It's okay. Almost there. Almost nappy time. Have fun cleaning up. <laughs> Don't push your luck. 
<laughs> oh, that was my favorite. I love that. might be dead guys I don't know if it is Marco that blew up the series it could have just been pissed off belters that were left behind being like do you know what we aren't <clears throat> we're not going back to the situation that we were in before minus all of the shit that has now been stripped of series so that's possible but i mean i did say when they were going in you know is he literally just going to blow it and create a kind of incendiary device and given the time lag and that we didn't see marco referring to it i genuinely don't know which one of those has happened but it's sort of a moot point really because it happened and it's gonna have killed a lot of people it would have killed a lot of belters it would have killed a fuck ton of of the marines that were there it probably killed Monica. Um, I don't like that at all. And I, the more I now I reflect on the episode and kind of seeing her chatting with Vassarala and stuff, it makes me worry that maybe that's the end for Monica. So hence me being all in in a complete state. Um. So, but explosion aside, Marco's plan essentially was like Cersei Lannister level fucked up it was just like yeah just let we'll just strip everything we'll take everything from the ships like Admiral fucking Kane we'll we'll strip them down um we'll fuck off and then when Earth and Mars arrive now it's their problem what a prick I hate him I fucking hate this guy so he's basically put in the lives of all those belters in jeopardy purely, literally as a political football. That's all he's cared about. And that distinction that he created with Philip tells you everything you need to know. One minute, oh, one belter nation is all this. And then the next minute, actually, no, we're not. He is a complete prick. He's full of bullshit. He doesn't ever believe a word that comes out of his mouth. It's all about gaming the present moment and moving on to the next. Um, and just as he did with Philip in that moment, told Philip what he needed to hear, fluffed him up, gave him some validation, elevated his status back to, you're, you're my son, you know, we're together, all that bullshit, gives him a hug. Ugh. And Philip is again locked in that moment. We've also got... Um, the situation with the Rosie. Now, Marco gets an opportunity to, in his eyes, he's like, this is my chance to kill James Holden and dot, 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 Naomi, maybe, if she's on the ship. But his his ire now is at James, is, is at James Holden, right? Um, I think he will have those words that Naomi said to him will be on repeat in his head ad infinitum. That... James Holden is everything that you pretend to be. And that first face-to-face, -face, like not face-to-face, -face, like, they are face-to-face, -face, they're just not physically in the same space. That was glorious. That was glorious because it just like, you could have stripped all the dialogue out and just shown the actress' faces and it was clear who had the power in that conversation. And... <clears throat> Jim, Jim is still, despite everything, not motivated by spite and revenge. I'm really surprised. I thought Jim was going on a bad journey last episode, but he, he could have destroyed that ship. Marco would have destroyed that ship if the roles were reversed. But he killed that torpedo for one reason and one reason only. And that was because he would not put Naomi through what she was about to go through. And what we were all fucking, I was <clears throat> hysterical in that scene, I think. I can't wait to see the reactions. I'm pretty sure I just lost it. 
And I was like, don't put her through this. Like, she's, God, everything Naomi has been through, please, for God's sake, don't make her have to say goodbye to her child in this way. And, you know, okay, is there any self-interest in it? Like, would Naomi ever be able to be with Holden if that was the case? I actually think she could. You know, Naomi didn't sit there and go, everybody stop, stop, or anything. I, she was as pained as she was in that moment. I think she also understood... <clears throat> that there was no stopping it. That is actually where Naomi was. So I was actually really quite surprised. I thought Naomi had done it and I had misread the scene and I was like, shit, this is another fucking, you know, haven't destroyed the proton molecule moment. This this will blow the whole fucking team apart. So I'm actually glad it was Jim that did it because it will be less, um, you know, less of an issue than if Naomi did it. But it's still going to be an issue if anyone finds out that he did that. Um, I don't know if they will. I don't know if that's going to be a plot point or not. But, you know, and ultimately he's the captain. So, you know, it's a, it's a different situation than if anyone else would have done it. But I think probably there would still be... Oh, fucking I. But even with that, I think there would still be, you know, a conversation or two to be had. About, about that because Marco and ours could be dead now this could all be over you know pretty sure that the free navy would fall apart in like a heartbeat there's no Anderson Dawes there's no Fred Johnson no Marco and Aras. the factions would all be fighting each other again this thing could be done by Christmas so yeah, I'm worried that might be an act of mercy that comes back to bite us in the ass, but I'm still glad that Jim is that man. I'm still glad that Jim is that man. Um, <clears throat> it was amazing to get the cameo of Anna Volovodov finally can say her name after all these seasons. One of my favourite characters in this. And do you know what? I literally thought as it happened, oh man, they've given us Pastor Anna. Do you think they're going to give us a prax at some point? Yes! We got a prax. I I have watched so many reactors um do this show and watching people fall in love with Prax and the bromance with Amos is like one of the best arcs of the show to like to watch in terms of reactions for me. Like I love watching people fall in love with Prax, fall in love with Amos. And fall in love with their relationship together. And without fail, you know, when we get the little time jump and Prax is just suddenly gone, everyone is devastated because he was such a brilliant character. So I'm really, really thankful that the show has chosen to make sure, you know, not only that we just see them, but these characters are continuing to make a massive contribution beyond the, you know, the stuff that we're seeing. And I just love that. I love that Anna is out there making, doing the same thing that she was doing the last time we saw her, making sure that she's giving speeches that reach people and, and have them make better, kinder decisions. Pratt's here, again, he's got no skin in the game. He's got his own family. He could just turn his back on this whole thing and try and live a quiet life. But no, they might have found a solution to the food issue, which is the big banner headline, actually, of this whole episode. It was like, dialogue and buried but guys this was the banner headline of this episode because if we can solve this food shortage this is enormous it's enormous for earth it's enormous for mars it's enormous for the belt this is something everyone can win with if we can use this technology share it right share it allow the belt to have like what if the belt had their own gaddy need you know like let the belt actually you know, harvest, basically farm and harvest for themselves rather than constantly have putting all this work in that is then just delivered out to the inner planets. This would be a massive, massive shift um, for, the, for the people of the belt. And I think it would be really stupid not to do that. I really hope that's the direction that's going in is like a common agricultural policy something that helps everyone and brings the belt up to a level a level footing because that's how you stop this shit 
ultimately you don't want any more Marco and Arises. You don't create the conditions in which they thrive. And Marco and Arises do not thrive when people have enough. They just don't. No one gives a shit. No one really wants chaos, right? People pick an easy injustice over a hard justice nine times out of ten. That's not the issue here. But it's like, for some reason, these people in power get so greedy that they can't, like, just work within those boundaries. Like, they've got to constantly push it and push it and push it until people are like, you know what, fuck it. That's it. You know? So... <clears throat> So we have that. And then I'm saving the other thing for last. Back on Laconia. I'm going to do two things on that. Firstly, we have this. The strange dogs seem to be able to fix things. As in, little bird dies. It didn't take it off to eat it. It took it off, apparently to bring it back to life, to restore it. And it appears to have done the same with the drone. And I think the next thing it's gonna do is fix um, Kara's brother because he's apparently dead. Um, so I think she is gonna like pick him up and run with him and like her mum and dad will be chasing her and being like, what are you doing, what are you doing? And she's like, just leave me. I'm <laughs> gonna get him there. So I'm excited about that. I really, I cannot overstate how much I'm enjoying the Laconia scenes. It's fucking amazing. And they're only like a, a minute or two or something each time. We're only getting these little, you know, time-wise they're not very much, but we are getting so much action and intrigue from Laconia. It's amazing. And I'm, not, I'm enjoying seeing more of the society they've got there. You know, they are settling well. Things look to be going pretty well so far um, in Laconia. Better than I had imagined, if I'm honest. Um, so it'd be, I'm keen to see that develop, you know, even further in the next episode. I can't wait for the next episode. That shit's going to be getting watched tomorrow, I'm telling you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I loved it every minute. It was amazing. So until the next time. Oh, no, hang on. Do I have anything else to talk about? Oh, we had, we also had a brief kind of look at Drummer and they're preparing. They've got now the Golden Bow um, people on board. Um, so they are gonna attack those supply depots. And I really hope that, that somehow there can be some, some cooperation with the Rosie and we can turn this, not just from kind of a personal satisfaction mission from point of view of Drummer, but also from like a, a war strategic move where we can actually, you know, target these depots and start really fucking um, with, with Marco's situation. Because it is tenuous. It is really tenuous. Um, and I don't, and I think given, you know, Marco thought he was really, really clever with Ceres. I don't think he was. You've seen already that the, the discontent that's growing is that they've already been treated like shit for a long time by owners. These people are not up for being treated like shit again and they're not willing to take all these risks only to be treated like shit, right? So this kind of coalition is gonna fall apart pretty fast if people feel that Marco doesn't give a shit about them. Not only has that happened, but now Philip has called him out in front of his entire crew. Like, it only takes someone to have, like, filmed that and get it out. And we've got, like, an Anderson Dawes revolt on Tycho situation facing Marco. So I'm... This is interesting, and it was interesting, actually, to see Philip not cower. He had enough. I did exactly what you said. You felt. That was fucking brilliant. So I'm aboard the Philip, you know, resurrection of character. 
um, hype train. I still am. But we'll see. Um, fucking amazing episode. That was probably my favourite episode yet, actually. I really, really love that. Again, incredible space battle scenes. You know, your lumps in your throat. I'm actually, I was feeling like, it's like you can feel the force. Like the, the force of the Gs when they're like spinning and stopping suddenly and going to barrel rolls and stuff. And you're just like, oh my God, I feel sick just watching this. I loved it. Until the next time. Bye-bye.